Welcome to the test labs of technical pool repair. Today we are doing advanced electrical with a ground fault switch and a transformer. Ground fault switches are designed to shut off power if there's a potential difference between the common and the hot wire. A ground fault switch just measures the, the current flow through these two wires. If they're exactly the same, it stays on. If there's any difference, then it shuts off. And it shuts off in cases in which there's uh, a little bit of current leak going from the hot wire somewhere else besides the return on the common wire. That other place is usually the neutral, the green here. So we have this little test set up, and I'm going to plug this thing in, 110 volt power. And to show that it's on, I'm going to connect this light here to the, the load side of the ground fault switch. And you can see that it comes on. I'm going to push the reset buttons underneath here, and you can hear that and shut the light off. Push that again, it comes back on. That's what a ground fault switch is protecting. It's protecting this light. Now, instead of letting it go back through this common wire like it should, I'm going to simulate a ground fault. So we still have the light on the hot wire, but I'm going to touch it to the, to the ground. And when I do this, it should try to light the light, but shut off immediately noticing the ground fault. So here we go. You saw the spark and it shut off. So the ground fault is working. That's a good way to test to see if it's working. So let's reset this. You can also see it's reset by looking at the meter. This meter is on the secondary windings of the transformer. It's connected through these wires to the secondary windings here. Let me do one other thing. You can see the meter's on. I'm going to push the test button on the ground fault switch, and you'll notice that the meter goes to zero. So that tells us that the meter is measuring uh, power through the, through the ground fault switch and through the transformer. Let's reset the ground fault switch. The meter shows power again. So let's do another test. Let's take our test light here and let's put it across the secondary windings of the transformer. Now it's not going to light as bright as it did before when I put it across the 220, or rather the 110. It's 110 volt light. It's going to go very dim. But you'll see the light bulb is burning just, just ever so slightly. You can even see the filament inside there. So that shows that we're, we also have power here. And you can see it with the test light. So let's try one other thing. Let's leave the one of the leads on the secondary windings of the transformer. And let's connect the other to the ground, just like we did before, and see if we can simulate a ground fault. And look what happens. Nothing. We still have power on the meter. So we're still getting power through here. Yet we're sending some of the power back to ground. And it's not tripping. Why is that? The reason is the transformer. <clears throat> the transformer is an isolation device. It has two separate windings. There's a primary winding and a secondary winding. The primary winding is fueled by these wires coming from the 110 power supply. They go through a coil. There's another coil on the other side that's the secondary winding, and that's attached to these wires. The two never come into contact inside. That's why it's an isolation transformer. So that when we ground out the secondary side, it doesn't look like there's any difference to the primary side. The primary side just sees an extra load. It just sees that there's power well, actually, it doesn't even see that because this power has nothing to do with this power over here. So it, it doesn't try to send current through there. It's just a, an incomplete circuit. That's why it didn't trip the, the ground fault switch. Now, the reason this is significant is on some swimming pool lights, noticeably the Pintair SAM light, they have an isolation transformer built into the light assembly, which means that if the light were to fill up with water, it would do the same thing as when I attached this test light to the secondary side of the transformer and to ground, which is it does nothing. It does not trip the ground fault switch. 
we can see that the light still has power. We still have power on there now. If I hook it up to the to the 110, you can see we still have power. And if I hook this to the ground, you can see it still trips. So there's nothing funny here. The ground fault switch is working just fine. Transform is doing exactly what it should do. But when the secondary shorts to ground, it doesn't trip the ground fault switch. This has been Clint Combs for technical pool repair. Thank you.